Hi, my name is Gunnar Hansson and I work as a junior doctor in ophthalmology. In this video I'm going to talk about common reason for dry eye. Dry eye disease is a complex and often chronic condition caused by a disruption in our tear film. This leads to inflammation and increased osmolarity, meaning that the salt concentration in the tear film increases and also it can lead to nerve involvement. These changes cause symptoms such as gritty sensation, burning sensation, red eyes, eye fatigue, blurred vision, and so on. To understand the underlying causes of dry eye, it's helpful to understand our tear film. Here is an illustration of the tear film. So the innermost layer is called the mucin layer. It's produced by our goblet cells on the surface of the eye. It allows the tear film to adhere probably to the cornea, the eye's outermost surface. In the middle, you have the aqueous layer. It's a water-based layer and it's produced by our lacrimal gland and the accessory glands of Krauss and Wolfring. And this layer contains salts such as sodium, potassium, and chloride, as well as proteins and antimicrobial substances that helps to protect the eye. The outermost layer of the tear film is called the lipid layer and it's produced by a our meibomian glands. These glands you find in the eyelids, both the upper and lower eyelid, and the function of the lipid layer is to slow evaporation of the underlying aqueous layer. So without a proper functional lipid layer, the rest of the tear film will evaporate. When any of those layers gets impaired, the whole tear film gets an unstable and it loses its protective function and therefore leading to your dry eye. You can divide the reason to why you get your dry eyes into two main categories. Aqueous deficient dry eye due to too little tear fluid production and evaporative dry eye due to dysfunction in the lipid layer so the tear film evaporates. In these two main categories, I have also listed four subcategories that is common reason for each main category. So let's go through. First, let's start with aqueous deficient dry eye. So I listed four different reasons why you can get aqueous deficient dry eye. So first of all is hormonal changes. With age, level of sex hormones often declines, especially testosterone. Since the lacrimal glands are sensitive to these hormone changes, when they drop, you get the less efficient tear production from the lacrimal gland. Testosterone also stimulates our meibomian gland to produce a lipid, the outermost part of the tear film, and with decline in testosterone production, you also get a decline in the lipid production from our meibomian gland. Women are often affected earlier due to their menopause and hormonal changes that comes with aging. That's a reason why women suffer from dry eye more than men do. Another reason for dry eye disease or the aqueous deficient type of dry eye is due to sensory block. That means after, for example, LASIK operation or cataract surgery, the nerve endings on our eye becomes less sensitive. Normally, when the eye is dry, the nerve endings send signal to the brain that the eye is dry, and then the brain sends signal back to the lacrimal gland, and the lacrimal gland produces tears. But after cataract surgery or LASIK, the nerve ending can be affected. Then the signal back to the brain can not function as it should, and the brain will not send the signal back to the lacrimal gland, and then we will have a decrease in our tear production that will lead to a dry eye. Another reason for aqueous deficient kind of dry eye is due to medication. Here I listed some medications that can cause a dry eye. So you have antihistamines that take for allergies. They block the histamine receptors and therefore reduce the tear volume. Also, diuretics can cause dry eye because it reduces fluid levels in the body, including the tear production. And this medication is commonly used for high blood pressure or heart failure. Beta blockers can also cause dry eye due to reduced signaling to the lacrimal gland. As you take for asthma or COPD or incontinence, can also reduce the tear production due to the reduction in the parasympathetic nerve activity. Antidepressants such as SSRI can also cause dry eye due to the effect of serotonin and norepinephrine balance, which uh, may disrupt the lacrimal gland function. Also, benzodiazepines may interfere with the nerve signaling to the lacrimal gland and therefore reducing the tear production. Also, be careful, all eye drops with preservatives can be harmful to the ocular surface, especially if they contain BAK, benzalconium chloride, which is directly toxic to the epithelial cell. So if you suffer from dry eyes, you should always opt for 
preservative free drops if it's possible. So if a medication is suspected to contribute to dry eyes, it's important to note that all of this medication doesn't lead to dry eye, but they may lead to dry eye. So if you suffer from dry eye and you take some of this medication, it can be worth considering if you need to take them to avoid the suffering from dry eye. For example, if you take uh, benzo for some sleep problems, it can be worth to try melatonin instead because it doesn't affect the dry eye. Also, if you have mild symptoms for depression, consider a non-pharmacological treatment or medication with fewer anticholinergic effects. If you have allergies, choose newer generation antihistamine with less anticholinergic effect. When you're choosing the eye drops for your dry eye, always choose one that is preservative free. And as I stated previous, this medication does not lead to dry eye all the time, but they may do. So if you have dry eyes and you use one of these, you can always consider if you have to use it and uh, if it can be worth to taking a break and evaluate if your dry eye health gets better when you're not taking this medication if it is possible. The immune diseases and inflammatory diseases can also lead to aqueous deficient kind of dry eye. Sjogren syndrome is an autoimmune disease where our own antibodies attacks our moisturized producing glands in the body. For example, the lacrimal gland in the eye or the salivary gland in the mouth. This leads to both dry mouth and dry eyes. So if you have dry eyes and a dry mouth and you need to drink water when you swallow food, this can mean that you have a Sjogren syndrome. The Sjogren syndrome will also leads to dry genitalia. If you suffer from Sjogren syndrome, it can be worth considering punctal plugs because that has actually shown quite an improvement when you have Sjogren syndrome. Now I'm going to talk about the reason why you get the evaporative kind of dry eye. So one reason to why your tear film evaporates is due to environmental changes. So for example, low humidity, air conditioning, wind or rapid changes in the temperature all increases the tear film evaporation. You may have noticed when it's windy that your eyes get very watery. This is due to cooling of the ocular surface, which leads to that the tear film breaks up faster, which leads to greater evaporation. One way to avoid this is just to wear regular glasses. Just wearing regular glasses actually reduces evaporation up to 40%. And of course, you can use glasses that contain the whole eye. Then you will even have a bigger decrease in the evaporation. Another reason why your tear film evaporates is due to reduced blink rate and reduced blink completeness. Normally, we blink around 15 to 20 times per minute, but during screen time, we blink in average, on average, around four to seven times per minute. And our blink completeness tends to decrease. That means normally when we blink, our eye, upper eyelid is touching the lower eyelid. And when the upper eyelid is touching the lower eyelid, then the lipid from the meibomian gland is expressed. But if we just blink below the pupil that some people tend to do during screen time, then the lipid is not expressed from the glands. So if we have a decrease in the blink rate and a decrease in the blink percent, in the blink completeness, then we won't express the lipid from our glands and that will lead to greater evaporation. Feel free to test your blink rate and blink completeness during screen time in our function Blink Behavior in that. In Blink Behavior, you watch a 30 second long video and after that you get the result, how often you blink and how complete you blink, if your blink is always complete or if your blink is incomplete. If your blink are incomplete and your blink rate is too low during screen time, be aware that actually improving these blink habits can decrease your dry eye symptoms by quite a lot. Another reason for evaporative kind of dry eye is due to MGD, meibomian gland dysfunction. This is the most common reason why you have dry eye. This is due to blockage or inflammation of your meibomian glands or with age that glands get fewer. This leads to decrease in the lipid production. The MGD can be caused by blepharitis or atrophy with age or demodex infestation or contact glass lens use or actually bad blinking habits. If you suffer from MGD, always use eye drops containing lipid and uh, consider to use heat masks and the blink training. Always do massage after heat mask. Feel free to watch my instruction video on heat mask. And uh, of course, more advanced treatments as Lippy Flow and IPL can help you. You can watch uh, the other video where I go through different uh, 
treatments for dry eye. Another reason why your TFM evaporates too quickly is due to contact lens use. When you use contact lenses, the lens absorbs the moisturized in the tear film. The contact lens also leads unevenly distribution of the tear film, which leads to greater evaporation. If you suffer from dry eyes due to contact lens use, feel free to consider to use moisturizing containing lenses. Actually, in research, moisturizing containing lenses improves the symptoms of dry eye. Regardless of the cause to your dry eye, if it is due to evaporation or if it is due to low tear production, ADDE, all of these share the same harmful cycle called the inflammatory cascade. All of these conditions that are listed, whatever it's due to reduce tear production or an increase in the evaporation, ultimately leads to the same cure core problem, too low water content in the tear film. And this leads to a harmful cycle called the inflammatory cascade. This causes the concentration of dissolved substances, particularly salt, to rise, a state known as hyperosmolarity. This change has several harmful effects on the ocular surface, so the hyperosmolarity directly damages the epithelial cells of the eye surface. In response to this stress, the ocular surface releases inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 or TNF-alpha or matrix metalloproteinase 9 MMP9. This activation of the inflammatory mediators leads to a reduction in the number of goblet cells, which produce mucin. As a result, the eye becomes even more dehydrated, leading to further epithelial damage, which leads to more inflammatory mediators, further goblet cells loss, and a vicious cycle is thereby established. Reduced tear film hydration leads to hyperosmolarity, which drives inflammation, causing the goblet cells loss, and thus further instability and dryness, and the cycle continues. It is therefore critical to break this vicious cycle so that I get a chance to recover. Thank you for watching this whole video. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Also, feel free to give feedback on the app's features. And I hope this video brings you some clarity. Thank you.